Our first question is for MJ Hager. Ms. Hager, you have earned the endorsement of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, the campaign arm of U.S. Senate Democrats. Some of your fellow uh, opponents in this race call this meddling by Washington, D.C. Ms. Sinzun Ramirez characterized the decision as, quote, tone deaf to the diverse Texas electorate. What's your response to those comments? You know, of all of the endorsements we've received and all the endorsements on everybody in this race, the DSCC endorsement is the only one that only looks at viability. All they care about is flipping the U.S. Senate and getting our government back up and running for working families again. So it was something we were very proud of. It was a nod to the grassroots campaign that we've built. Um, we have over 30,000 unique donors. Our average donation is uh, $22, and we get 90 percent of our donations from under $100, and we've raised $4 million that way against a guy that is not doing anything for Texas families. So uh, polling looks great. The data looks great. The, the tens of thousands of Texans that I've met driving across the state tell me that they're ready and hungry to send somebody to, to D.C. to deliver a healthy dose of Texas values so that when they look at D.C., they see strength and integrity and servant leadership reflected back. Thank you very much. I saw Mrs. Garcia's hand raised first, and we'll get to Colonel Harris and, and Ms. Susan Ramirez. So, MJ, I want to say that I respect so much your resume and what you have accomplished, but the fact is that you did not beat John Carter, and we are not going to beat John Cornyn by playing politics as usual. Money cannot be the turn determining factor in who wins this race. The fact is that the Texas Democratic Party has not won a U.S. Senate seat since 1986, before my first campaign that I volunteered on. We need to be different. We need to inspire people by being the party of moral clarity and political courage. Thank you very much, Mrs. Garcia. We'll go to you, Colonel Harris. I saw your hand raised next. So um, th that decision was made, what, uh, less than a week after the closing of the application? There's no possible way that they knew or vetted every candidate before they, they made their decision. And that's just clearly that those Democrats in D.C. or Democrats in New York and California don't understand Texas Democrats. They're, they select someone who meets their criteria, but their criteria hasn't won in Texas since 86. So only, only Texans know what Texans need. Thank you very much, Colonel Harris. We have time for just one more uh, rebuttal. I'll give it to Ms. Sinzun Ramirez. I, I did invoke you in the question. So. You know, I think many of us admire what MJ did in her district and race in 2018. But when we think about winning statewide and viability in 2020, we need a candidate that can speak to the rich diversity of who the Texas Democratic Party is, that can bring white progressives, African Americans, Asians, and Latinos together. Y quizás una candidata que también hable español. That is what is a candidate, that's the kind of candidate that will win in 2020. And I'm proud that that's what I've done my entire career. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Hager, we'll give you 30 seconds to close on this topic if you wish. Yeah, I think that people who actually really know politics and partisan index and gerrymandering, um, that district was gerrymandered to be much redder than the rest of the state. And John Carter won his last midterm by 32 points. We lost that race by 2.9 and still outperformed all of the statewide candidates, including Beto. So I think actually that that race is a good example of how we are actually going to win this race in 2020. 